Wow, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Right. At this time, we're going to open up in prayer by Dr. Um, Alexandra. Alexander is the founder of uh, House of Judah uh, Outreach Ministries. So at this time, I'm going to turn it open to Dr. Alexandria to open us up in prayer. Dr. Alexandria. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And welcome everyone to the call tonight. May God continuously be with you as we move forward in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for we are assembled here on tonight, dear Lord, Father God, with hearts of thanksgiving in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Father, Jesus is the anointed one. And as he, as he has opened these doors and brought us up the, all together, we just give you all honor, glory, and praise. Father, we know that and understand that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. So as we move forward, dear Lord, Father God, let us cast all our cares upon you, dear Lord, Father God, for we know only what we do will for you will stand the test of time. Only what we do for you, Heavenly Father, will last. So in this hour, dear Lord, Father God, we pray for those that are in leadership. We pray for those, Father, that are in authority over us, Lord, that you will give them wisdom, guidance, understanding, and compassion as you have given Mother and Father Moon. So we thank you, dear Lord, Father God, as they have laid a foundation for us to continue this journey. Father, let us open up our eyes and ears to receive what thus saith the Lord. I pray and lift up my soul. Sister Dr. Tanya on tonight, dear Lord, Father God, that as she bless us with the presentation, Father, as she pours out into us, that you will pour back into her. So dear Lord, Father God, as we move, God, let us move in your being. Let us move in your realm. Let us, dear Lord, Father God, be lifted up on tonight, dear Lord, Father God, that we can lift up someone else. Let this word be infectious, dear Lord, Father God, that we can carry it, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will touch even every, everyone on this call from the crown of their heads to the soles of their foot, their feet, dear Lord, Father God, and that you will open up their eyes of understanding and their hearts of love to receive this word of wisdom on tonight. Father, we give you all honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and adieu. Adieu and amen. Praise God. Uh, again, welcome to Chosen, everyone. It is Monday night and it is time to receive the word from on tonight, but before we uh, hear the word, we have the pleasure of having our uh, Dr. Luan Rouse uh, here with us on tonight. Can we please give him a big round of applause? Our ACLC uh, co-chair, uh, Dr. Luhan Rouse, he is an amazing man of God. He uh, does so uh, much great work helping us and making us. He's a great mentor. He's a great um, person to know. If you don't know him personally, please try to get to know him because he can always drop some great wisdom and some great guidance on you. So with nothing else being said at this time, I want to present to some and introduce to others, no one other than Dr. Luan Rouse, who allows us to keep hope alive. Dr. Rouse, are you there? Oh, yes, 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 Pastor Antonio Bo. Thank you. Thank you for being who you are as a co-director with the Young Christian Leadership Conference. And I must say that I am tremendously pleased and joy with what is going on with YCLC. Not only are you leading a way for young leaders to come into an understanding of the Bible, God, of Jesus Christ, but also this fresh wind of the Holy Spirit with true parents and the divine principle. I wanted to come on for this moment. Everybody that's gathered, gathered here tonight, Chosen is taking on a rekindling. Yes, it is. We are on fire because we have been hearing from Dr. Edwards what is in the essence of the divine principle in its exposition. We're going to hear more about that, but we are also preparing for Bishop Edwards to start next week. And in preparation for him, I wanted to give you a little more excitement to get it going. He and I talked and we discerned with his help that we ought to 
bring Chosen to this exciting time. And he's going to work with his wife next week, or should I say it this way? He has invited her to work with him. <laughs> he yes. Bring the word, and we're all going to be together. Right. And I also wanted to announce go to YouTube. You see Pastor Antonio Boyd. He is part of YCLC, and YCLC is a part of COP and Heat being featured by the Reverend Pastor Diedrich Hatton on his new video called Light It Up. That's right. Light it up. That down. Light it up. It up. Go to YouTube. Invite everybody you know. Go to YouTube and let's light it up together around the world. Women in ministry, thank you for being with Paula White. Uh, uh, let's see. Last week, was it? Yes. Dr. Jenkins is here. Dr. Jenkins, raise your hand. Wave your hand. Dr. Rayco Jenkins, thank you for being there. Come on now. Get everybody back again. Come to Chosen again. I'm going to be with you now every week because we cannot be in the back with this anymore. I've got to come out in front and help us fire it up again. Glory. Antonio Bowen, bring up the one who's going to fire us up tonight amen amen praise god uh wow um i would love to show um the lighted up video i'm not sure if that's what uh the plan is but i do hey, have go for it go for I, it oh hey. awesome <laughs> um can i get um ability to share my screen if possible uh, let's see if i have the ability I don't have the ability to share my screen. Um, you do now. I do now? You do now. It took me a second. <laughs> I sure do. I sure Go do. Let's, let's do it. Um, share an entire screen. Go. Are y'all able to hear the video? Yes. It's low. Yeah.
world if we are one and they are part of us. We can fill their hearts with love. We can spark their chains and turn the darkness to the light in us. Love is joy, peace, gracious kindness. Let's spread that like the virus. Tear down these walls that divide us. We are made in the same likeness. Lighting up all over the world. Love signs inside these boys and girls. The smile from that. Then sing. Love can conquer anything. So light it up. Light it up. Wow, praise God. Wow, that was so amazing. Okay, praise God. Now at the time, can we give the a YCLC? I seen a couple people that we noticed in the Pastor Tangan. We seen uh, quite a few uh, people that I recognize. Wow, such a blessing. Now, we're going to have someone truly I light up for us tonight, and it is no one other than Dr. Tanya Edwards. She is currently the World Clergy Leadership Conference, WCLC Director of International Affairs. She provides uh, services to ACLC as the uh, National Executive Committee, and she received a holy marriage blessing with her husband, Bishop Jesse Edwards, in 2001. Uh, Dr. Edwards has supported ACLC since its early days and has countless memories and spent time with the founders, Dr. Sanya Moon and Dr. Hajahan Moon, uh, going on speaking tours together and speaking to at world events. She is also the proud author of A Mother's Heart, Dr. Edwards continues servicing as ACLC today as the WCLC liaison. Dr. Edwards strives to continue uh, to work in unifying the body of Christ in America and across the world. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome as I present to some and introduce the other, none other than Dr. Edwards. At her conclusion, we will hear from no one other for commentate, commentation, Dr. Luan Rouse, immediate following Dr. Edwards. Wow, Antonio, thank you so much. That is a wonderful introduction. Again, I don't know who wrote it, but thank you whoever did. And uh, that is wonderful. And yes, as we heard the beginning song, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. And then we hear light it up. Man, we've had, we're having church tonight right here on the, on the Zoom. Church, we're having a great time. So we're going to get right into our lecture series. This is uh, session six. And so I believe this is the last section for part one. And then next week we'll begin part two. So let's begin. The incorporeal world and the corporeal world whose center is human beings. The incorporeal. Next. Okay, the incorporeal world and the corporeal world as substantial realities. The universe was created after the pattern of a human being who is in the image of God's dual characteristics. But corresponding to the human mind and the body, the universe consists of the incorporeal world, which is the spirit world, and the corporeal world, which is the physical world both of which are real and they are both substantial. The incorporeal world is so called because we cannot perceive it through our five physical senses. But the two words together, what do they form? They form the cosmos. Next. 
just as we cannot discern a person's character without fathoming his mind, and we cannot understand the fundamental meaning of human life without understanding God. So we cannot completely understand the corporeal world without understanding the incorporeal world. What does that mean? That means that we cannot, if we cannot understand the world we are physically in, how are we going to understand the spiritual world? We've got to come to those senses. And, th and though it says here that we cannot discern a person's character without fathoming his mind, but we cannot understand the meaning, the fundamental meaning of actual human life without understanding God. If you don't understand God, none of this will make sense, but you've got to understand God to understand all the other. Next. The incorporeal world is in the position of the subject partner and the corporeal world is that of the object partner. The latter is like a shadow of the former. When we shed our physical bodies, go back. When we shed our physical bodies, we enter the incorporeal world as spirits and there we live for eternity. So when we, when we pass away, when our bodies go to the, into the earth, we enter the spirit world, as it is talked about here, the incorporeal world. And that we, there we will live for eternity in the spirit world. Next. The position of human beings in the cosmos. Now, what did we say the cosmos was? It is both the incorporeal world and the corporeal world, which is the spirit world and the earthly world, the fleshly world. First, God created human beings to be the rulers of the universe. So that's why we are here. We are here on earth to be rulers. The universe does not of itself have internal sensibility toward God. Hence, God does not govern the universe actually directly. Rather, God endowed, he empowered, he gave us the ability and the power as human beings with sensibilities to all things in the universe. And he gave them the mandate to rule over the universe directly, just like he gave Adam and Eve in the garden to rule over the things that he had created, to rule over the animals, the earth, and, and to pr produce what they needed to produce from the earth. And that is our job now in the universe that God mandated to us to rule over. Next. Human beings composed of flesh, it pinch yourself, that's flesh, which can dominate the incorporeal world and the spirit, which can dominate the incorporeal world. Likewise, they have the potential to rule both worlds. Next. The mediator and center of harmony of the cosmos. Second, God created human beings to be the mediator and the center of harmony of the cosmos. That's both the incorporeal world and the corporeal world. When a person's flesh and their spirit unite through give and take action and then become God's substantial object partner, the corporeal and the incorporeal world can also begin give and take action with that person as their center. They then achieve harmonious integration to construct a cosmos that is also responsive to God. Next. A true person, are we true people? Okay. A true person acts as the mediator and center of harmony between what? The two worlds. What are those two worlds? The incorporeal world and the corporeal world. Next. Encapsulation, encapsulation of the cosmos. Third, God created human beings to encapsulate in a substantial form, back, in a substantial form, the essences of everything in the cosmos. Let me read that again. God created human beings, that's you and I, 
to encapsulate in a substantial form the essences of everything in the cosmos. But God created the universe by projecting and developing the pre-existent prototype of the human internal nature and external form into countless substantial forms as we talked pre in previous sessions, the internal nature and the external form. Next. The human spirit encapsulates all of the elements found in the incorporeal world. Since God created the spirit world as the unfolding of the spirit's internal nature and the external form. See, the human body encapsulates all the elements of the corporeal world. Since God created the material realm as the unfolding of the body's internal nature and external form. Next. Accordingly, since human beings contain within themselves the essences of all things in the cosmos, that makes each person a micro, 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 something, micro, something. <laughs> micro, <laughs> micro, <laughs> <laughs> all right if you won't remember anything else you'll remember right. this okay next the reciprocal relationship between the physical self and the spirit self the structure and the functions of the physical self see the physical self it consists of the dual characteristics of the physical mind which is a subject partner and the physical body, which is the object partner. See, those both have to work together, the mind and the body. If not, then we're in trouble. The physical mind directs the physical body to maintain the functions necessary for its survival, protection, and reproduction, which all of this is such a beautiful thought that God created us just for this here alone. Just this portion of the whole lecture, if you can remember this, that you've got to remember this. So let's go next. For the physical self to grow in good health, it must absorb air and sunlight. We all love that. We all need that air and sunlight, which are intangible yang types of nourishment and eat and drink food and water, which is something else we all need. They are also tangible yin types of nourishment. The body has give and take with this nourishment through its digestive and circulatory systems. Next. Good or evil in the conduct of the physical cell. Good or evil in the conduct of the physical self is the main de detriment of whether the spirit self becomes good or evil. Okay, so this determines the good or evil in your mind, your body, whatever you are working together with, with your mind and body, whatever you choose, the good or the evil is going to uh, determine where your spirit self becomes. This is because the physical self provides a certain element, which we call the vitality element to the spirit self. Now, I don't know about you, but some of us, as we get older, and I know most of you are not old as I am, but as you get older, you, um, you need like vitality help. You need vitality uh, uh, elements to put in your body to help you to go on. But we can have the vitality element because the physical self provi provides a certain element within itself. And God created this in us so that we could go on. Next. In our everyday experience, our mind rejoices when our physical self performs good deeds but feels anxiety after evil conduct. How many of you experience that? You do something good, you feel good. You do something bad, you feel bad. 
This is because vitality elements, which can be good or evil, according to the deeds of the physical self, they are infused into our spirit self. And that's why Adam and Eve were told that, uh, and through the Bible, I'm sorry, through the Bible, they were told that if you choose to do good, then that's what we want. If you choose to do bad, then you suffer. So we have to determine within ourselves if we're going to be good or evil according to our mind and our body. Next. The structure and functions of the spirit self. Our spirit self or spirit is a substantial yet incorporeal reality, which can be apprehended only through the spiritual senses. It is the subject partner to our physical self. Our spirit can communicate directly with God and is meant to govern the incorporeal world, including the angius. Next. In appearance, our spirit self matches our physical self. What does that mean? Sometimes if we do wrong or we do evil, it will show because our physical self will know, our mind and our body will know that we are doing wrong, that we've done wrong. And after we shed the physical self, we enter the spirit world and live there for eternity, which we've already covered because we, when we pass on and we go to the spirit world, the Bible says that when a spirit goes back to God, when one passes away, the spirit goes back to God and the body then goes to the grave. And the spirit will always live in the spirit world, but we are there for eternity. The reason we desire an eternal, eternal life is because our innermost self, innermost inside of us is the spirit self, which has an in, eternal, eternal nature. You can't take that away. You cannot remove it, but it determines how you deal with your spirit, which is going to determine what happens at the end. Next. structure of the spirit self our spirit self consists of dual characteristics of spirit mind which is a subject partner and our spirit body which is our object object partner the spirit mind is the center of the spirit self and it is where god dwells you know the bible talks about the spirit and dwelling in us and god also gives us his spirit and when we receive the spirit of God that the Bible talks about, we are born anew. We are born afresh. And it's almost like being born again. And I think it was Nicodemus said that, um, you know, how can he be born again? Do I need to enter into my mother's womb a second time? And it was no, there are ways that you can be born again. And that is by receiving the spirit of God. So here it says the spirit grows through give and take action between the two types of nourishment. Okay, here again, life elements of a yang type from God and vitality elements of a yin type from the physical self. Next. Relationship between the physical self and the spirit self. What is our relationship between our own physical self and our spirit self? I have to ask myself that sometimes, you know, is, is my spirit creating an atmosphere or within me, how I should be, what kind of person am I? Is my spirit right with God that is going to show and reflect to others that my spirit is right. And therefore that way, that's the way people will be able to tell. The spirit can grow only while it abides in the flesh. See, when you die, your spirit can't go to the grave with you. Your spirit, the Bible says, goes back to God. So it does not stay in the body. Thus, the relationship between the physical self and the spirit self is similar to that between a tree and its fruit. So we have to bear fruit with our ourselves. And if our spirit's right, we are going to bear fruit. If it's not right, the body will show. We are not showing fruit. Next. When the physical mind 
obeys the spirit mind and the physical self acts. Now you're going to act according to your spirit and physical minds, according to the good purpose of the spirit mind. The physical self receives living spirit elements from the spirit self and becomes what? Wholesome. In return, the physical self provides good, not bad. It provides good vitality elements to the spirit self, which enable the spirit self to grow properly. Truth eliminates the innermost desire of the spirit mind. What does that mean? Truth. When you hear truth, when you hear good things, illuminates the innermost desire of that spirit that's within you. And it's going to illuminate into your physical body and illuminate to others. Next. Perfection and growth of the spirit self. The spirit self can attain perfection only during a person's earthly life which is what we just discussed. The spirit mind guides the spirit self as it grows in the soil of the physical self. You plant a seed in the ground, it's got to grow. I mean, it doesn't, it can do, you know, doesn't have to, but it, that's what the purpose is. That's what it's put there for. It's supposed to grow in the soil, but this in our spirit mind guides the spirit to grow in the soil of our physical self. So the growth of the spirit self towards perfection, it progresses through the three orderly stages ordained by the principles of outreach, which is what? Completion, which is the divine spirit, growth, which is the life spirit, formation, which is a form of spirit. And in the soil, remember this, in the soil of your physical self, your spirit mind guides the spirit self to grow. Next. A spirit in the formation stage of life is called a form spirit. In the growth stage is a life spirit. And in the completion stage, a divine spirit. How many of us want a divine spirit? We want to reach that completion age. We don't want to stay in the formation. Some people stay in that formation stage and they don't grow, but we want to reach completion and have that divine spirit that God has placed not only within our bodies, but within our spirit and our minds. So we can all, it can all work together for the glory of God. A spirit fully matures as a divine spirit. When the person's spirit self and physical self unite through perfect give and take action centered on God, if it's not centered on God, it's not going anywhere, and form the four position foundation, a divine spirit can accurately feel and perceive, it will know every reality in the spirit world. Next. People of divine spirit. Have you ever seen someone that they just, everything they say, they do, their actions, just, you know, you just say, they're so, they're so divine. They're just so, you know, caught up in the spirit. They're just of God. They actually, you say, they've got their act together, so to speak. But people of the divine spirit, we want to talk about. As these spiritual realities resonate through the physical self, and manifest themselves as physiological phenomena, they can be recognized through the five senses. So we have the spirit self, the physical self. The spirit self is the kingdom of heaven in the spirit world and the physiological is the kingdom of heaven on earth. And we're striving to get to the kingdom of heaven in the spirit world. Next. People of divine spirit who thus resonate with the spirit world, they build the kingdom of heaven on earth. We can't get evil people to build the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's not going to work. But if we are spirit minded, if we are, are, are kingdom minded, then we are going to build the kingdom of heaven. Where? Right here on earth. When they shed their physical bodies, they will make a smooth transition into the kingdom of heaven up in the spirit world. 
Now, it's not going to be the kingdom of heaven right here on earth because the spirit, as I said, goes back to God who gave it. But for this reason, the kingdom of heaven in heaven will be realized only after the kingdom of heaven on earth has been established. And I want to read that one more time. The kingdom of heaven in heaven will be realized only after the kingdom of heaven on earth has been established. It has been, it's our responsibility to make sure that that kingdom on, of heaven on earth makes it to the kingdom of heaven in the spirit world, which is everything. Next. Sensibilities of a spirit. Wow. All of the sensibilities of a spirit are cultivated through the reciprocal relationship with the physical self during earthly life. Therefore, only when a person reaches perfection and is totally, not half, not a little bit, but totally immersed in the love of God while they're on earth, they can be, they fully delight in the love of God as a spirit after his death. You're going to fully delight and love God if, if your spirit is right. If your spirit is not right, you're not going to love God like you should or as God is wanting you to be. So the next. Qualities of the spirit self. Wow. All the qualities of the spirit self are developed while it abides in the physical self. Let me read that again. All the qualities of the spirit self, they are developed while it abides in the physical self. Sinful conduct during earthly life aggravates evil and ugliness in the spirit of a fallen person. While the redemption of sins granted during earthly life opens the way for his spirit to become good. This is where the spirit of God can infill your body and can fill your, uh, your, your heart, your soul, your spirit within you. And this becomes the way for the spirit to become good. You cannot hold the spirit of God and do bad. It just doesn't work. But it can become good. This was the reason Jesus had to come to the earth in the flesh to save sinful humanity. We must lead a good life while we are here on the earth. Next. Qualities of the spirit self. We have in Matthew 16, 19, Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven to Peter. And he remained on the earth. But in Matthew 18, 18, he said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Why? Why would this be? Well, it says, because the primary objective of the providence of restoration must be carried out on earth. Must be. No other way. It's got to be. Next heaven and hell. Wow, that's a tough one. Tough subject to talk about. It is not God who decides whether a person's spirit enters heaven or hell upon his death. It is decided by the spirit himself. It's decided by you. It's decided by me. It's decided by our brothers, by our sisters, by every human being. They decide whether they're going to go to heaven or hell based upon their life and their spirit that they live here on earth. Humans are created so that once they reach perfection, they will fully breathe the love of God. Those who committed sinful deeds while on earth become crippled spirits. They are incapable, incapable of fully breathing in the love of God. Why is that so? That's because the evil spirit cannot breathe the love of God. It's got to be the good spirit. You're going to breathe evil. You're going to breathe the things that are opposite of God. But we want to breathe in what? The love of God. They find it agonizing to stand before God. It's very hard. How would you, why would you even want to be before God? Although someday you're going to be. But the center of true love and choose to dwell in hell of their own will. Next. 
Since the human spirit can grow only in the soil of the physical self, the multiplication of human spirit takes place at the same time that the multiplication of physical selves occurs when? During earthly life. Next. The spirit mind, the physical mind, and their relationship in the human body. The relationship between the spirit mind and the physical mind is like that between internal nature and external form. When they become one through give and take action with God as their center, they form a united functioning entity which guides the spirit self and physical self to become harmonious and progress towards the purpose of creation. This united entity is the mind of the human being. Next. The conscience and the original mind. The conscience is that faculty of the human mind, which by virtue of its inborn nature, always directs us towards what we think is good. However, as the standard of goodness is fallen in fallen human beings varies, the standard of their conscience also fluctuates. This causes frequent contention even among those who advocate a consensuous life. Next. The original mind is that faculty of the human mind which pursues absolute goodness. That's the original mind is, was there for absolute goodness. The original mind also relates to the conscience of the internal nature to external form. A person's conscience directs him to pursue goodness according to the standard he has set up in ignorance, even though it may differ from the original standard. However, the original mind repels this faulty standard and works to correct the conscience. What is that conscience? The conscience is that that says, don't, don't take that from the store and put it in your pocket. Don't do this to your brother or sister. Don't do evil. Don't do bad. When your mind and your body is saying, I want to steal that piece of candy from the candy store. The conscience is saying, no, don't do it. Don't do that because that is not what the original mind was supposed to do. Next. Evil mind. You ever know of anybody with an evil mind? Oh my goodness. As long as our spirit mind and physical mind are under the bondage of Satan, that means he's controlling our life. He's controlling our mind and our actions. The functioning entity they form through their give and take action is called the evil mind. The evil mind continually drives people to do evil. And I believe that you know, the conscience that you have within you before you actually turn your life and heart and mind and spirit and soul over to that evil, completely full of evil, your conscience is going to direct you and talk to you and say, don't do that. Don't go there. But you have the will and God's allowed you to make that determination what you want to do with your life and how you want to carry it out from now till eternity. Our original mind and conscious directs us to repel the evil mind. They quickly, no, they guide us in, something's blocking my words. They guide us in desperate efforts to reject evil desires and cling to goodness. We've got to cling to goodness, my brothers and sisters. If we don't cling to goodness, we're going to have a conscience that gives in. I mean, that will tell us to, to do good and to continue. But our mind and our body and our spirit is going to not stay there. We're going to cling to evil unless we reject that desire and cling to the goodness by breaking our ties with Satan and turning our face to God. In the church, we say, Turn to God in repentance. If you've done wrong, if you've done evil, if you've done these things, if your spirit and physical mind have gone the way of Satan or evil, 
come to an altar and repent. Come to, you can have an altar in your home anywhere, you know that. But come and repent before God. Ask him to take that evil away. Ask him to cleanse you of the evilness. He will do it. So our original mind and conscience direct us to repel the evil mind. They guide us in desperate efforts to reject evil desires and cling to goodness by breaking our ties with Satan and turning to the face of God. Next. Okay, brothers and sisters, that's it for my lecture tonight. Next week, we will hear chapter two on the human fall. Thank you for listening and God bless. Thank you, Dr. Everett. Hey, everybody, let's say hallelujah. Tell you to clap your hand, but we had a revival tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Word has been preached. Uh, listen, time is rolling on, and I want to ask a few of you to speak. But Dr. Edwards, thank you so much. Wonderful presentation, wonderful word, and you did deliver as a preacher tonight. Pastor Antonio Bowles. You, you, you've been calling us to scream. I'm calling you to scream now. I want to hear from you. God is the owner of the universe. And Dr. Edwards' the presentation spoke biblical theology, uh, historical theology, systematic theology, and especially practical theology. But in that systematic theology, the question came up, who is God? Mm. Tell us, who is God to you? Now, you don't have but about two minutes to do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can't ask a preacher under two minutes. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, I, I really, uh, God is truly, um, there's an old song, God is truly my everything. Um, he, he's my way of life. He's my uh, way of thinking. He's he's my all know. Um, God is truly um, my everything, and God is truly the the one uh, uh, according to the bible he's truly the one that guides me um the one that shows me which uh direction the, the uh, give me what is that person uh to me uh, um i know that's in spoke to us tonight because she he said something uh so so profound that when uh, ab about sin and and how sin is um, can uh, lead us to uh, self uh, pain and self certain things, and I'm reminded of a story of the Bible where it talks about when God, uh, when Jesus, this was Jesus, Jesus seen the man who was paralyzed, and he told the man, "Your sins are forgiven," and immediately uh, the the man sins, God forgave his sin and he was forgiven and he was made holy when God forgave that man sin, but his sickness fell off of him when he forgave him from his sin. So sometimes our sin is the reason why uh, we are sick. I don't, I know only God, Fox and me, he, he's my forgiver, and he's the one that's able uh, to keep you when you want to be kept. So he's that one uh, to me. So uh, that story, it, it's a, such a great story because it teaches us that God can forgive your sins and Thank you. Froze up on us and You're breaking up. Jumping. And forgive your sins, and once He forgive you, uh, your sins are forgiven, and you. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, you're going in and out you on go, us, Pastor. But listen, you did good. I'm not. I'm not going to have to beep beep you, but you're going in and out. Straight. 
I've got to I've got to go now to Susan Pfefferman. Susan Pfefferman, you're a great teacher. And Pastor Bowen even brought up a little bit of the big biblical theology. This it brought to my mind Luke the 18th chapter, where this 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 uh, rich person goes to Jesus, called Jesus a good teacher, and then Jesus said, Don't play with me. But get down to the nitty gritty of what it is. But the question that he posed is, how might I inherit eternal life? With all of this teaching that was going on, it came to my mind, eternal life. How do we get there? Susan Fetherman, teacher that you are, tell us. Oh, my goodness. I do not uh, see her. Oh, uh, she's not on now. Well, well I, she was just a well, minute. I know who can handle that since she may have disappeared. Hey, Glenda Phillips Lee, Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee, tell us how do we inherit eternal life? Now, don't let me beep beep you. But <laughs> <laughs> and tell us about this eternal life in here. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Apostle. First of all, God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And once your, your heart, the Bible says, let this same mind that was in Christ Jesus be that same mind that's in you, meaning the word of God. In order for us to start this process, we must understand the word of God. We must study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing this word. And as we begin to go through that growth formation, we get to know who God is. And that's why it's so important that we study the principles because it gives us an in-depth understanding of what the word of God is saying, mainly because King James came in and, and scattered or broke up the word of God. The Bible says that if it was, if it was, sorry, so sorry. That's my son, DeAndre. The Bible says that if, <laughs> the Bible says that um, if it was if it was the if it was my word, it would have caused people to change, right? So a lot of times we get pieces and part of the word, but we don't understand that word for ourselves. We get it because someone else said it, but we're not studying and and taking on that responsibility. Um, one thing Pastor Tanya was saying, without an understanding, if you can't understand the um, corp in corporal and the corporal world individually, you're not going to be able to come into the essence of God's ideal, his original ideal. And she mentioned that how we cannot discern a person's character without fathoming, fathoming the mind and we cannot understand this fundamental meaning of the human life. Now the Bible tells you to know them that labor among you, right? In order to know them that labor among them, you're going to have to know the fruits of the spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the fruit of the flesh. So it takes a whole lot of prayer. It takes a whole lot of intimacy with God. It takes a whole lot of us fellowshipping one with another, what we're doing now. And I believe that we are well on our way. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Listen, we don't have much time tonight, but be ready on Monday nights. I may be coming to you at any time. A lot of you know me to do that. Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee knows that. Hey, now Antonio Bowen knows that. All of you may get to know it as we go along on Mondays. One who knows it very well, and he is also an educator of this, who I want to ask to give the summary uh, reflection tonight. It's the Reverend Christian Sika. Christian, give us three minutes summary of what we've heard. Oh, thank you. Um... Well, thank you for putting me on the spotlight, Dr. Ross. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> you know I like to do it. <laughs> so uh, We love you, Chris. Well, thank you. 
Thank you for your reading, Dr. Pastor Mama Tanya Edwards. <laughs> yeah, um, really this section, when you think about it, uh, it's really speaking about God's word. You know, it's speaking about us making God's word flesh, you know, how Jesus became flesh, you know. So it's really speaking about Jesus, basically, the ideal, you know, the, the ideal incarnate. So that's what we need to mimic. That's what we need to duplicate, you know. So uh, especially when it speaks about us becoming the, the mediator and the center of harmony, you know, in the universe, in the cosmos, you know, and we know Jesus was that, you know, and again, it is about God's way. Like Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by right. the word of God, you yeah. know. So this means that God's word, when we consume it, you know, in our spirit, it has to affect our being. So life element, and then the life that we live physically, we give to our spirit vitality elements. So this is not just the one principle being theoretic. This is life that we live, the life that Jesus lived. This is what we are talking about here. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Close. Thank you for being Good with job. me. Good job. Good job. Yeah. You come every Monday because you know how we roll. I like to hear you bring it from the education department. God bless you. Hey, Marie Rao. Oh, I'm not going to call on you. I know what the deal is. Mm. not shown for a reason. Stay muted. But I'm coming to talk to you about this early in the morning. I'll be leaving out of New York and we discuss this very thing. I say this to say to each one of you, God loves you. Marie and I do too. And we want you to discuss this. Discuss this with your loved ones. Discuss it with your friends. Discuss it even with those you might consider to be your <laughs> is the word of God. Chosen is more than about the education series. It is about understanding the culture that God desires for us to have through the divine <laughs> design. Wow. Thank you for being on Chosen. Thank you for already planning to join us next Monday. Thank you for to bring two, three, four more with you when you come on next Monday. Bishop Edwards, listen, I'm coming to you next week. Be ready. I know you are. Ready to go. Your wife has done a wonderful, magnificent job, job. All of the all of the Hey, Reverend Bless you. Opportunity for those who are chosen to follow your ways. Strengthen in our minds. Strengthen us in our hearts, our soul, and then take care of our strengthening that we might live in the fruit of your spirit. Love one another. Take on the joy of living and help to find peace in this world. If we do it, may we fulfill the request of Dr. Hatcher Hansen to help bring an end to violence. South Korea, North Korea threat right now is uneasing many. You can do it, bring an end to what is going on in Ukraine because of the decision of right or Jesus. maybe those of others. Oh, Tonight, we make the decision to be under the guidance of your spirit and of your word. Others to the same. We are your, your daughter. We are your men and women who have matured enough to know that we can't leave one human ignorant of your divine love. So help us to live for the sake of others, first all 
in your divine word. We pray this in the name that is given unto you in any way because you are still the same. But in Jesus' name, most powerfully given. And by way of the Holy Spirit, Father and Mother Moon, and of course, we are blessed central families, Luan and Marie Rouse. Amen. Amen. And you. Adieu. 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 Let's go next week. God bless. God bless. Thank you.